In the searing heat of the Indian subcontinent, beneath layers of forgotten soil, something has been found that could shatter everything we thought we knew. It's not a relic. It's not a scroll. It's DNA. Ancient, preserved, and whispering secrets buried for over 4,000 years. A single discovery, pulled from the dust of time, has begun to undo centuries of assumptions about the origins of one of the world's oldest civilizations, the Indus Valley, Harappa, Mohenjo-Daro. Civilizations once believed to have emerged in isolation are now at the center of a genetic storm, one that is forcing historians and archaeologists to rewrite the very foundation of Indian history. How could one DNA sample overturn textbooks, beliefs, and national myths? And who were the real ancestors of ancient India? The answers may lie not in legends, but in the molecular code left behind by the dead. For centuries, the story of India's origins was told through epic poems, crumbling ruins, and colonial interpretations. The Indus Valley Civilization, flourishing between 2600 and 1900 BCE, was once hailed as the first great urban culture of South Asia, its cities more advanced than anything seen in Europe at the time. Over 1,500 settlements spanned what is now India and Pakistan, with organized streets, drainage systems, and standardized weights. Yet, despite its scale, one mystery endured. Where did these people come from? Were they native to the land or migrants from distant empires? In the 20th century, the Aryan migration theory took hold, suggesting that Indo-European-speaking tribes swept into India from Central Asia, displacing or mixing with the local Harappans. This theory, shaped more by colonial ideologies than hard evidence, became deeply embedded in textbooks, politics, and identity. But archaeologists lacked biological proof. The soil was too hot. DNA degraded. Until now. Because in the quiet remains of an ancient burial site, scientists found the impossible. It began in Rakigari, a dusty village in northern India, sitting silently atop the buried ruins of a once thriving Harappan metropolis. For years, this site was known to archaeologists, but its true potential remained untapped until a team of Indian researchers unearthed a 4,500-year-old burial. Among the remains was a remarkably well-preserved skeleton of a woman. But what stunned the scientific world was not the pottery, jewelry, or burial style. It was the teeth. Deep inside her molars, protected from time and decay, was ancient DNA the first ever successfully recovered genome from the Indus Valley civilization. It was a breakthrough no one thought possible in the harsh South Asian climate. The sample was rushed to labs, both in India and abroad, and as the genetic code was unlocked, so too was the beginning of a revelation. This single woman, silent for millennia, was about to speak louder than any scroll or monument ever could. Unlocking ancient DNA is never simple, especially from a land where heat, moisture, and time conspire to erase every trace of biological history. But the sample from Rakigari was different. Teams of geneticists from India, South Korea, and Harvard joined forces using cutting-edge techniques to extract, sequence, and analyze the fragile strands of genetic material. Each step had to be done in sterile, controlled environments. One mistake, and the ancient genome could be lost forever. Months passed. Supercomputers ran simulations. Statistical models were cross-referenced with modern South Asian and Central Asian populations. The goal? To discover where this Harappan woman fit in humanity's vast genetic puzzle. But as results began to emerge, something didn't line up. There was no trace of steppe ancestry, the genetic marker commonly linked to Indo-European migrations from Central Asia. This meant only one thing. The people of the Indus Valley were genetically distinct and possibly had no connection to the so-called Aryan invaders. 
the implications were staggering. Centuries of theories, all hanging by a thread of misplaced assumptions. And this was just the beginning. When the full genome was sequenced, the truth emerged in stunning clarity. The ancient woman from Rakigari showed no genetic link to steppe populations, the same groups believed to have introduced Indo-European languages and reshaped South Asia's ancestry. Instead, her DNA was a blend of two distinct ancient lineages, Southeast Asian hunter-gatherers and early Iranian farmers. This mix had occurred thousands of years before any supposed Aryan migration. In other words, the people of the Indus Valley were not outsiders. They were homegrown, rooted in the subcontinent for millennia. But that wasn't all. Her DNA also matched modern South Asians, especially those from Dravidian-speaking regions in southern India. This suggested a continuous genetic line from the Indus Valley to today, untouched by the migrations once assumed to be foundational. The scientific world was rocked. Geneticists confirmed the Indus people were not displaced. They became the backbone of Indian ancestry. With one ancient genome, a new narrative was born, not of invasion, but of continuity. Picture this. Over 4,000 years ago, vast cities rise along the Indus and Gagar Hakra rivers. Towering granaries, bustling marketplaces, precise urban grids. The people speak an unknown language. They trade with Mesopotamia. They craft intricate seals and jewelry. And now we know they carry within them a unique blend of ancestries shaped by local evolution and ancient migrations from the Iranian plateau, not from the steppes of Central Asia. There is no evidence of conquest, no sign of cultural disruption. Instead, what we see is a civilization thriving independently, connected by trade and culture rather than invasion. As climate change dried up the rivers, many Harappans migrated east and south, blending into other cultures across the subcontinent. Their descendants carried the same genetic signatures, the same DNA found in that woman from Rakigari, into the languages, customs, and faces of modern India. The Aryan invasion? It may have been a myth, built not on fact, but on ideology. What really happened was far more complex and far more Indian than anyone ever imagined. This discovery doesn't just rewrite a chapter of Indian history. It rewires its very foundation. For generations, the idea of an outside force shaping ancient India dominated classrooms, politics, and identity. But now, science tells a different story. A story of deep roots, not sudden arrivals. A civilization born from the land itself, evolving over millennia, carrying its legacy through the blood of its people, unbroken. The ancient woman from Rakigari, once buried in silence, has become the voice of an entire civilization. Her DNA speaks louder than myth, clearer than stone, and with more authority than any colonial era theory ever could. This is not just about India. It's about how science, especially ancient DNA, is changing the way we understand who we are, where we came from, and what narratives truly define us. And this is only the beginning. If you found this revelation as mind-blowing as we did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and explore more videos that dive deep into the secrets of our ancient past. History is changing, one genome at a time.